Okay, so now I want to just talk about disease suppression. And you know, every, it doesn't matter what crop you've got, you probably see some of those, um, you know, those pathogens, you've heard of them, they, you know, and the problem is it's never just one pathogen. And so there's no simple sort of answer to this in terms of how to deal with them because every pathogen is different. But um, the main reason we've lost, we have so many pathogen problems in our agricultural soils is, is firstly we've lost plant diversity. So we tend to grow a single crop or a few crops and so we finish up with all the pathogens that attack those crops and uh, um, I guess what we finish up with is a biological system that's out of balance and we've lost some of that diversity that we used to have. And so I guess the solution to that is to try and build back some diversity by getting some, you know, more plants into the system and, and get that diversity back. And the sort of things that can be done are cover cropping, rotational cropping. And I think you know, there's quite, people are starting to wake up to this a bit. And I, certainly in Queensland, we've got sugar growers now who instead of growing a single rotation crop, are trying these multi-species mixes. There's a guy in Mackay who's got an eight species mix that he's putting in because he wants to get some diversity back into the system. Now, it's, only, you know, we've, it's very early days in terms of you know, whether we're actually getting some benefits from it, but they're the sort of things that people are trying. So I think it's, that, that every plant is different. You know, they have different types of root systems. And they, you know, they, some go deep in the soil, some don't. So that's all going to help in terms of creating some diversity in the system. One type of disease suppression is what we call organic matter disease, uh, mediated uh, disease suppression. So this is where we get a whole range of different organisms that are all dependent on all the bacteria and fungi that are feeding on this organic matter. And they, they collectively keep, help to keep the disease under control. I guess they can act in a lot of different ways. They can compete with the pathogen for, you know, for food or space. They can produce antibiotics. Some, some organisms produce toxins. Uh, there's predation going on, something eating something else, or there are going to be parasites that you know, parasitise other things. So I guess in general, as you increase the level of soil organic matter, you tend to get a soil that's more suppressive to pathogens. There's more active biology there and a lot more suppression. And, and, and the other good thing about it is it tends to be, it's not just a single, it, it usually has some effect on a range of pathogens. And, and so uh, if you've got three or four major pathogens, there's a chance that there could be activity against all, all of them to some extent. So the, this is sort of a couple of examples. Uh, there are these fungi that, uh, that trap nematodes. They produce these traps that kill, they, nematode crawls in, gets trapped by the nematode, and then the uh, fungus then grows in and uh, actually kills them. So that just shows a video showing a, a nematode that's you can see the trap up, uh, up here. Nematodes get caught by that trap and you know, a few days, uh, no, it, uh, probably a few hours, that nematode will be dead and parasitised. There are predatory nematodes in the soil. Uh, that's, uh, these things eat other nematodes. When you do a nematode sample, you want to see these things in your soil because that shows you at least got some things in there that are actually doing, doing good things for you. There's also uh, mites that eat nematodes. So th these little animals are, as I said, about uh, 0.25, 0.3 millimetres in diameter, very small. So we did a little pot experiment where we added these, we added 10 mites to a 400 mil pot, which is about you know, that size, and grew a cane plant in it, and inoculated it with nematodes to attack the cane plant. And I couldn't believe the results when we took it out. The, this stunt nematode, which is one of the bad nematodes, you know, there was four, nearly 5,000 in the ones without mites and only about 47 in the, uh, in the ones that had mites. So a 99% reduction. I, I don't usually get that sort of result with, uh, with a nematocyte. <laughs> That's right. Uh, it reduced root lesion nematode numbers by 70% and it also reduced these microbial feeders, the bacterial and fungal feeders, and they have very short life cycles and can reproduce very rapidly. So I was absolutely amazed. But you've got to be very careful interpreting that result because that's in a fairly sterile environment where those mites don't have any competition from anything else. But uh, it certainly showed us, and, you know, in the lab, we could, they were eating uh, full, uh, 20 to 60 nematodes a day. It's pretty amazing that a little animal like that could eat 20 to 60 nematodes per day. We certainly know that these things are in our soil. We also know that they eat nematodes, but 
what we really don't know is how many nematodes they eat in the real environment. You know, so what I'm really, I guess, trying to say is that there's a whole lot of things in our soil if we can encourage, they won't do it all on their own, but collectively they can help to keep some of our pests under control.